Hello and welcome to another video on YouTube channel of Tutorialspedia.com. In this video, I will explain how we can create complex XML schemas XSDs in TIPCO Businessworks 5. So here is the detail of uh, all that we are going to see in this video. Uh, we will be taking into consideration a scenario of user management which I have been uh, using in different uh, other tutorials as well in this uh, channel. We will create a complex user schema uh, where we will be seeing how we have uh, different type of nested uh, repeating elements. We will see how we can create optional and mandatory elements, how we can use the choice uh, for certain elements. We will also uh, see that how we can use enumerations to restrict the possible values for certain elements to only a set of values uh, based on the provided enumeration. And we will also see how we can create attributes for the elements in an XST. And uh, I will also show you how we can uh, use the sequencing and using uh, uh, all we can access colon all how we can uh, just ignore the uh, uh, se sequence and allow the elements in any order. And uh, I will also explain how we can uh, use different type of facet options available, like uh, providing the maximum value, providing the minimum value, and also the total length of uh, the elements uh, value, and these type of uh, different options which are available. And then I will explain how we can uh, create specific namespace of our XML schema. And last but not least, uh, we will be observing our XST structure in design and source mode. As you know that uh, in case of uh, TIPCO Businessworks and TIPCO Designer, the good thing is that uh, you have both options. Uh, if you are very good uh, with the approach of going through the uh, creation of XSTs by writing the XST schema uh, manually, then you, you can use the source option, source tab. And if you are uh, uh, in, a, in a convenient manner, by using the uh, visual option, and then you can uh, simply uh, create your XML schema uh, in a more uh, uh, easier manner and more uh, uh, comfortable way uh, using uh, the normal uh, option in uh, TIPCO Works 5 Designer, where you just add uh, the elements uh, in a proper way in a tabular format, and then um, behind the scene, the schema uh, source automatically gets created. So uh, before I proceed with the actual uh, demo of uh, this video tutorial, uh, I will request you to please uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed before and also press the bell icon so that you are able to get a notification for the latest videos uploaded. So I have already opened a test uh, project in CoBW5 Designer. So I will directly create a new schema inside the schemas folder. I have created a folder with the name shared resources inside that we have schemas folder. So here uh, you can add a schema in two ways. One is to go to the palettes and from the palettes uh, you can drag and drop uh, the schema and the other option is that uh, you can go to and if you want that you will have to go to this XML tools and here you can drag this schema to the uh, design mode. The second option is you can right click and then you can go to add resources from XML tools you can choose schema. So I always prefer this approach. It's up to you which approach you want to use. So first thing I would like to do is to uh, give a meaningful name to this schema. Let's name it uh, user schema. So once you create the user schema and you double click, now here you have two options. You can go to uh, source. And if you uh, are comfortable with uh, updating the XML structure uh, by going into the source and playing with the source itself, then you can use this. Otherwise, if you go to this elements and types, here now you can uh, create your schema, you can create all elements, and you can define uh, different uh, uh, element structures for your XML schema uh, using this option. So I will uh, create schema using this option instead of updating the source manually. So let's first create the root uh, element. We will name it as the users. And in the content, we will choose elements because we want this users is going to be the root element, uh, which will be containing uh, multiple users. So here we will add a new uh, in the content model. We will add user. So this user is going to be the uh, element under the users. So here we have two options. When we create a new element, it asks us that you want it to be created as globally or you want it to be defined as locally. 
if you create it locally then it will be under the user so uh, you will see that it will be users slash user and if you choose globally then it will be at global level and it will not be created uh, with the users slash user so let's create it locally and click on this create button so you can see we have users slash user Another thing that we want to do is that this user we want to be uh, repeating. So for that, you will just put a steric here. So if you see here, you have different options, sequence, optional, repeatable. So by default, if you put a steric, then it is with sequence, uh, optional, repeatable. So it means you can have zero or more repeatable uh, user in your uh, XML based on this uh, existing. So now once we created the user, now uh, within the user we want to have different elements under that. So we will choose elements under the content and in the content model we are going to define the elements which are going to be uh, part of this uh, user schema. So we will have, uh, let's add user ID, then uh, first name, uh, middle name, last name, uh, role. Okay, make it role ID. And uh, then we can have uh, uh, user skills. So this user skills again, we want to uh, have uh, multiple uh, sub elements. So uh, first let's make it uh, optional. So in order to make it optional, we will put a question mark, role ID, and we have last name, we have middle name. So let's make middle name also as optional. So now if you uh, click here and locally define all these elements, uh, how our schema looks like, here you can see we have users, inside that we have user and within the user we have user ID. Uh, we have first name, middle name, last name, role ID and we have uh, user skills. So let's change the uh, types. So a user ID is going to be integer and also role ID is going to be integers the user skills again is going to have uh, sub elements so we will make it type elements and uh, let's give a choice inside this skill id or skill name so we want to give user a choice that within the user skills either a skill id can be provided or the skill name can be provided so this pipe sign basically uh, makes these elements uh, as as a choice so let's locally define both. So skill ID, we will make it as, let's make it long. And skill name is string. So now if you see, we have users. Within that, we have a user, which is repeatable. Inside that, we have integer user ID. Then we have first name. We have an optional middle name. We have last name. We have role ID. And we have user skills. And within the user skills, we have skill ID and skill name, which are, uh, which, which are, the uh, which are separated through a choice pipe. So either skill ID or the skill name is required for this. Now what we want to do is that for the user, if in the if we look at the current structure, all the elements need to be in the same order. Only then uh, the schema uh, will validate any XML against this. So we want to make it uh, in a way that uh, user is independent in the ordering. So they can provide any element first, maybe first name, then user ID, then middle name, then role ID, then last name or whatever. So for that, we will just use this all. So if you choose this all, you can see that now we have this ampersand signed sign uh, in uh, all the elements. And now you see here that it is uh, in, even in the graphical mode, it's showing it in the different uh, structure. So now these elements which are under the user, they are uh, separated with uh, access colon all if you go into the uh, source and uh, the ordering now does not matter. Okay, this is one thing. Now what we want to do is that we want to uh, change the schema properties. For that, what we want to do is that we want to define namespace. So to define the namespace, you go to schema properties and here you see target namespace. So let's change it to something else. If you make it like www.abc.com slash user. So it's just an example. So in this way, we have changed the namespace of the target namespace of our schema. Okay, now what we want to do is that we want to apply different uh, options for our elements. Like if we go to uh, our role ID, I want to create an enumeration for this role ID so that only those specific values which are defined in enumeration are accepted by this schema. So for that, I will click on this properties 
and for this role id i will click on this enumeration tab and i will add the values i will add one i will add two and i will add three this means that now this user uh, role id can be one of the three values one two or three only then it will be considered as a valid uh, value for this element okay now what we want to do is that for some other elements like uh, for uh, uh, let me okay let me go to the first name so the for, for the first name what i want is that i want to make sure that its min length is 5 and max length is 15 so in this way we are restricting the user that the first name should be always between 5 and 15 characters and actually you can do the same thing with the length as well but for now i will do it with min length and max length so if you specify a length that will be specific to that like if you put 10 in the length then it means that only 10 uh, characters are allowed for this but if you put min length and max length then you provide it a range of uh, possible uh, length of uh, this ele uh, this uh, element values and you can do different type of uh, patterns as well and for the white spaces you can uh, create here that if there's a white space what you want to do with that we want to collapse it you want to preserve it or you want to replace it with something else okay now what i want to do is that uh, i want to uh, apply some other properties like uh, last name for the last name i want to make it nilable so if you provide it as nilable this means that uh, if, if if the value does not exist then uh, not not for the last name let's do it for the middle name which is optional as well so i want to uh, make it nilable so if uh, normally what happens for an optional element if there is no value then it doesn't appear at all uh, in in the uh, in the in there is in the xml which is created based based on that xst but if you if it's nilable then a, uh, an element with a nil value will be still there so we, we want to create it as nilable so that it exist in the xml uh, based on this xst no matter we have a value or not okay now if we go to the source tab and we uh, observe all the changes that we did how they appear in our xst you can uh, see over here so here you observe that we have the target namespace based on what we defined then we have users and min occurs zero max occurs unbounded which means that it is optional optional means it can have zero value zero user or it can have any number of uh, users and inside that we have user id which is type int then we have first name and for the first name you can see that it has min and max length uh, 5 and 15 accordingly and then we have middle name and this middle name nilable is true and min occurs is zero and uh, because we set it as nilable and then we can see that for the role id we have an enumeration uh, with the values one two and three same as how we defined it and also you can see that for the uh, for the role for the user skill uh, for the skill id and skill uh, name we have choice over here so it means one of the two values either skill id or skill name should be present one more thing that i want to do is that for the user i want to uh, define an attribute so let's define an attribute at the user level uh, which will define the language of the user so which language user speaks so if we create an attribute like this now if you go into the uh, source tab you will be able to see that we have an attribute for the user name language type string this is within the uh, user uh, element so for the user we have this attribute so let's go back to the elements and now we see the complete structure of our uh, schema so let's okay let me click on the root level i will click on users so that we see the whole picture so we see users and within that we have user and inside the user we have one attribute with the name language and then we have uh, different elements and then we have further uh, nested element user skill with uh, twice uh, element skill id and skill name So that's it from this uh, video it was uh, just an overview of how we can uh, create our xml schemas uh, using tipco bw5 designer 
I did not go into much nitty gritties as there are more and more uh, options available and uh, this uh, designer tool uh, for creation of uh, XST is quite handy and quite powerful and uh, it's based on the uh, general uh, XST syntax. So if you know how to create XSTs in any uh, other language or in general, then it's very easy for you to create XSTs in BW5 as well. But a good thing is that in BW5, uh, even if you're not very good with the syntax of uh, XSTs, using this uh, graphical uh, tool, uh, you can create your XSTs more conveniently. So that's it from this video. Please uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, I will come up with more videos uh, and uh, soon I will have another video how to create XSTs uh, in BW6, which is a slightly different uh, uh, method and structure. And uh, I'll come up with more uh, content and more related videos in future as well. Thank you very much.